trips at all recently that are uh... um, last year I, I did a week in the sawtooth range that's in central Idaho right. and then right after that like two days after that we went and did a week in the Wind Rivers yeah that's cool in Wyoming and that was a good year right I, I don't usually get to, to go out on two backpacking trips that long in a year and this year I've just got too much work so right oh, you're one of those yeah, the Burnham rest. guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. No, I like to, I like to do it right. Yeah, there's definitely a, a technique to it. Yep. I think by the end of this, I'm gonna have the technique down. <laughs> to... It's just not letting it get too hot. Gotta... I'm pretty well. I'm pretty impatient, so oh, okay. I, I like just I just want to have as much sugar in me as possible. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, so so I, I guess you know I, I literally just met you today. Uh -huh. and, you know, um, we were talking a little bit about this before. Where it's like. Um, I was telling you the thing that I want for this podcast is it to be less, way less about technique and way more just about like, why do you do art in the first place? Mm -hmm. And like, what are the things that like, what's your background? Like, what's the thing that keeps you, you know, actually, you know, keeps you going in, in art and the things that you're actually interested in and, you know, well, that's a good, uh, that's a really good big question. Um, I think, well, for me, I've never had any other serious considerations. Right. I burned mine. <laughs> it's, so good for, it's so good for Rasmia. Yeah, talk, talking high and mighty. Yeah. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah. Just fell off my, my throne. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so the only other thing I really considered uh, growing up was uh, being a ninja. Yeah. That was one. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty serious endeavor. I couldn't find the right pathway to get to that, so... Right. Um, another one was uh, being, I wanted to be an uh, Air Force fighter pilot. And um, I didn't realize at an early age that there was an actual path. That, so it was just kind of like a childhood dream that quickly right. evaporated. So basically, this is all there is for me. Yeah. You know? Right. And so my motivation is this is my life. Right. And um, uh, another, another strong one is just taking care of my family. Right. There's, it's one thing uh, surviving as an artist and another thing making you feel like you're taking good care of your right. your wife and kids with, with painting. Yeah. And uh, if it came down to it um, and I had to stop painting to provide for them, I would because that's more important. Right. Um, and in fact, you know, I had a, a number of years where that's what I did. Right. I, I dug ditches. I worked at a grocery store. I did sales. I did home inspections for banks. I did all kinds of whatever I had to do. Right. Um, and uh, But eventually I've, I've been able to paint for a living full right. time like for about 12, 13 years now. Right. right. Um, so that's kind of, I guess that's one aspect of answering your question. I don't know if you... Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, I mean, the being a professional artist is so, it's, I mean, it's so nonlinear and it's, it's actually quite a difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people, at least art students that I meet, they get caught up in we're talking about it, the, uh, like the hustle culture, you know, yeah. trying to do things in just a few years and, you know, trying to rush things or necessarily like also compromising what they want to do to actually make a living off of it. And mm -hmm. 
ultimately it ends up burning them out or they are unhappy at the jobs that they end up getting because it's not ultimately what they ended up wanting to do. Right. And the act of oil painting is such a difficult way of becoming a professional artist. And I really admire the fact that you've gone and you've gone through the gauntlet of, you know, you know oil paint, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it's, um, more efficient to just do it digitally. Right. Yeah. Um, which is like, you, you know, it, it's obviously not about efficiency, but you know, when it comes to like, um, you know, obviously feeding your family is the higher priority and mm -hmm. doing it through oil painting is like, um, it's like, why, why is that important? Like it's, uh, yeah, well, I, I guess cause it's just, I've, it's my, it's part of my, a big part of my self identity. Yeah. Like I'm, I am an, I'm an artist. I, I, I like to paint and when I'm not painting, I'm for long periods of time. I'm not, I'm not happy. Right. So it's just, I guess it's really fulfilling. That's just kind of what I, what I need as a human being because I've developed myself into that type of a creature. Right. Um, and I, I guess we, you know, I've read a lot of um, different um, people's lives, what they've, different people have suffered through and what uh, different philosophies and religions and things like that that have, that have motivated people to go their different directions. Right. And I think in the end, if I had to, I could find as much purpose in something else. Right. But I would have to become a different person, yeah. basically, right. to do that. And uh, so, yeah, this is this is really fulfilling to me and it's just, right. I'm lucky, really blessed that I live in a place and a time where there's a market for what yeah. I love to do. And, uh, so I, I don't think that, uh, that it's exclusive. I like the fulfillment I get, I don't think, I don't think it's exclusive to the skill set of oil painting, but it's what I've assigned myself to. Right. And, um, it's worked out for me and I'm really fortunate. Yeah. All right. Well, I, like a question that I've been asking myself a lot recently is like, I really am happy about my solar panel that I was showing you earlier. Mm -hmm. Like I'm really like, I was really excited about that. Right. That was like the biggest, like it wasn't the biggest purchase of the year, but that was like one of the things that I was most excited about when I mm -hmm. bought it, I guess this year. And I was thinking if I had a hundred million dollars, that purchase would be way less significant. You know, it's like, right. it, it's almost like an ex machina, you know? Right. It's mm -hmm. like, um, these things, this thing that I care about that solves this problem and I'm really proud of it suddenly, like the bar for solving, for getting that same fulfillment becomes way, way higher, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think there's something about like, uh, protecting the things that you really care about because when you start compromising, you start like thinking once I have, you know, X amount of money or once I live in X spot or once I have X thing and it it's going to solve the problem of, of fulfillment, right? Yeah. I think that's the, you hit on something really important there. And I think what's important for everybody is meaning. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm talking with my mouth full. <laughs> my mom taught me not to do that. Yeah. Now you're doing it live. There you go. Yeah. You can't, you can't not put a marshmallow in your mouth when it's just the yeah. perfect temperature right in front of you. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so I think as human beings, we're after meaning more than anything else. Yeah. And um, when you when you have X amount of money, the next step up um, in your material possessions can feel like that's the meaning. Yeah. Um, but then once you get that thing, or your income goes up, then something else has to become the meaning. Right. And, and I think that's the trap we get into is we feel like um, whether it's accolades or skill development or material possessions, we think that we're going to achieve that meaning with the next step. Yeah. And I don't think that's altogether a bad thing because that's what drives us to, to improve, yeah. to move forward. Um, but the illusion of the fulfillment we'll get from right. any of those things, if, if you don't realize that it's an illusion, right. then you're going to be forever chasing and whenever you, and, and slowly it's going to become more and more empty as you go forward. Right. So, yeah. Right. Well, it's strange to, I mean, I've been observing that more and more. I've been traveling for the past couple of years and I've been meeting a really wide range of people mm -hmm. ranging from extremely, extremely wealthy to almost having nothing. And, um, I'll be meeting extremely wealthy people who 
feel like they don't necessarily live that to me it doesn't seem like they live the happiest lives mm-hmm. or they don't live any happier lives than anyone else I know. right they're still filled with the same tragedy right it's like right. you know they um earned a hundred million dollars but their best friend killed themselves or something right it's like no matter, there's, there's nothing their money can do about it, that absolutely and that person might have chosen the you know their friend over the money right mm-hmm. they definitely would have right mm-hmm. but they get the money right and it's right. like a um and no matter who you are you're vulnerable to uh to tragedy and you know you know some horrible thing happening and moving on in spite of that and finding like um the act of painting i'm sure is more satisfying to you than the actual act of finishing a painting right yeah it, it, because it's the uh it's the journey it's the right and that's kind of a maybe a i don't know people overuse that i think but walking that that border between order and chaos where you're constantly striving for to to create order out of chaos right the chaos has to be there to um to make that meaningful. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I guess I didn't. Let me see. I think that the key point that I would make is that you have to have a foundation of meaning yeah. that, that that undergirds everything that you're doing, right. and that has that that meaning has to address those those things that come up, like your friend dying or your yeah. own death right. or. Um, like let's say someone in your life betrays you or something like that. There has to be something that, that, um, I don't want to say solves those problems because they're, they're not solvable problems, but they, that makes everything okay. Yeah. And when you have that foundation, you can give an extreme amount of meaning to just about anything you do, yeah. whether it's mopping a floor or building a skyscraper. Right. Um, you can you can then relax about that undergirding if you if you constantly are aware that there's something underneath you that's, right. that's going to give way and you're going to be thrown into this this chaos that you can't control right then you're then no matter what you do you're just going to be chasing something up here um you, with your walls or your pillars or whatever when your foundation's crumbling yeah but once you have that that f- firm foundation of something that, that gives you that stability you can make meaning out of just about anything. Yeah, right. And it's it's strange when you think about that way. It's like, um, I'll be I've been traveling all over the country, and I see people that are, you know, they're waiters or they're you know clerks at a bank or they're you know mm-hmm. bagging groceries or, you know, and it's like a, um, there's a part of me that might feel like having one of those jobs would be a failure at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, I, like I would if you feel like a regression or something, right. which is, you know, that's, that's like the wrong way to think about it. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like that there's no shame in having a job like that. And I think it's actually extremely honorable to find meaning in something that, like that. You know? Yeah. Well, it's all about, it's not about the job, but we have a natural uh, inborn ability to perceive uh, the meaning around us mm-hmm. and anything that's easy doesn't, doesn't carry with it much meaning. Right. And so, uh, for somebody who is going from the habit of you know living off of welfare and not having a job, right. fending from the self, for themselves and having a, a job at a grocery store might be like a, a tremendous step. Yeah, and that's good. That's amazing. Yeah, and there's no way you can judge someone else, uh, someone else's position, and um, or uh, the meaning or the significance of someone else's position. Yeah. But within yourself, if you look at like say. Um, and any, any achievement that's really easy to attain, right. it's just, it, it looks like it's not important, right. but anything that looks difficult and you, you, you think if I really apply myself to this, right. then it, then I'll have that, um, that meaningful process of right. driving towards something better. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're right. There's no, there's nothing, uh, wrong with the person that's pushing around, uh, carts at a grocery store. Right. Uh, or digging ditches or whatever. In fact, that's really high, high praiseworthy work for um, for anybody at, at a certain point in their lives. Right. But once you can do that, and once you feel like you can reach further, then it becomes like time to move on. Yeah. And um, so I wouldn't throw hierarchies out the window. Yeah. Um, because there's definitely things that are that are harder to strive for that that may, might give you more meaning because of that. Yeah. Because of that strife. 
But they definitely wouldn't point to someone and say, oh, their life has to be meaningless because they don't make a lot of money or they yeah. live in a tiny house. It has nothing nothing to do with it directly. Right. Well, and I, I, the thing I'm finding is that it's all relative. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost like a decision to decide that your life is meaningful. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I was talking to a friend about this the other day where it's like I feel like for a long time I was waiting for somebody to tell me that art is worth doing. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, this is, this is it. This is, you know, this is your passion. You love this. Right. Yeah. And it, I realize that's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you're never going to feel like it's completely worth your time. You right. Know? And it, it almost takes a, it takes a tremendous amount of faith, I think actually to feel like the thing you're doing is, is valuable and contributing something to the world and society. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, um, I, I think it, it all has to do with how you feel about yourself fundamentally. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have uh, an understanding, I think. And I, I feel like I'm going on like I'm a philosopher, like I know something about life, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just putting my thoughts out there. Well, yeah, you're your person, but, you know. You're, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, being in this studio all the time, every day, I have a lot of time to think. Yeah. And I have thought about this, this subject quite a bit. And it's funny, um, the, the um, landmarks for success I set early on in my career and you when I pass those up I don't feel any, like I'm any more of a person yeah. or there's anything more um, valuable about myself right. um, but I think that's the way it's meant to be because ultimately you know we can get really philosophical or religious yeah. um, I don't think that anybody um, I think it's a big mistake yeah. to think that any amount of success in any any direction other than the the underpinnings of who we are yeah. and what life is fundamentally all about um, nothing short of that is going to give you the kind of meaning you're after yeah. and a lot of people I think all of us go through the experience of trying to, to find that right. meaning and until we realize it's not in our successes right. it's not even in our skill development it's in who we are as a person and yeah. part of that is our inborn value as individuals. And part of that is, um, what we're striving to become as, as a person, as a human being, uh, how do we treat other people and things like that relate very strongly to this. Right. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not attainable through any material possession or skill set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, uh, the idea that you're never going to be done too, is an important part. Right. It's like, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, you're going to, you're going to feel insecure. You're going to mm-hmm. feel like you have something left to do. And I think that's part of, part of being a human is embracing that mm-hmm. there's never going to be a point. Like part of the billion dollar question that I ask everybody is like, um, you know, there are things that you do that you're going to keep doing no matter what. Mm-hmm. Right. And that mm-hmm. you're going to find meaning from no matter what. And, yeah. Um, and there are things you would stop doing as well. If you, if you also had a billion dollars, right. You know, and, um, once you remove the need for resources from the equation, then I think it gives people uh, a perspective to think about, like, what do they really care about? You know? mm-hmm. Like, who are they if, you know, who are the people they would talk to if they, you know, there are people that I might actually stop talking to if I had the resources around me. Not, not, not out of any malicious intent. Mm-hmm. I just wouldn't have the time, right? Yeah. I wouldn't, like, go to the bank anymore. I wouldn't, you know, I would, there were certain things I wouldn't be doing, mm-hmm. right? Cause I would like make more time for skydiving or something. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's like a, you know, like the thing that we know for sure is that we're going to die. That's mm-hmm. the only thing we know for sure. Right. And when you know, when you think about it from that perspective, the most valuable thing you have is actually it's your time. It's never, it's never money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And actually I would take it a step beyond that. I think once you realize that we're all going to die, yeah. everything goes ends in disillusionment right. you know everything's going to crumble um, that's a stark cold reality that I think I, w- I would venture to say everybody has to at least come to face to face with at some point in their life yeah. Yeah. and then but once you do once you get there there's I find there's something bigger yeah and um, you know we I want to leave room for for everybody's beliefs, but I'm just going to state mine um, because this is where I find the answer. Um, When you are in the pit of despair um, from uh, the death of a loved one or contemplating your own death or, or whatever, 
we all get to those moments where we're able to fully delve into that, yeah. into our souls. And it's, it's a very, very difficult thing. Right. And it drives people in a lot of different directions. But um, in, my, in my experience, um, when I get to that point um, and I, I reach for something to make it all okay, yeah. and um, then I feel, I feel God reaching back. Yeah. And I feel God telling me that, yes, this is a, this is a reality you're dealing with. Right. And you're not going to be able to see um, what lies beyond. Right. But there is something beyond. Yeah. And it's more beautiful than anything you can possibly imagine. Right. And I will make everything okay. Yeah. And that, to me, is the foundational underpinning that allows me to have the security that I can find meaning in just about anything I do. Yeah. Because I don't have that, that um, trembling under my feet anymore. Uh, I, I came to a point where I had to realize that I needed to face the darkness. Yeah. And when I did, I found that there was a foundation there that was already there that I didn't know about. Yeah. But once I realized that was there, then I can stop thinking, stop caring so much about what people think, stop caring so much about accolades that I want or financial success that I want. And I can start forgiving myself for the mistakes that I make. Yeah. And um, life just got to be a lot more meaningful and a lot more bearable. Right. And um, anyway, so I, yeah, I, I don't mean for that to be a counterpoint to what you're saying, but more of like an addition onto what you were saying. Because right. I think that for me was a very important part in, in life. And yeah, without that, Art doesn't mean anything. Well, I, I think it's a uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, uh, acknowledging your vulnerability makes painting way more valuable. It's yeah, like you're not going to be around forever. There's only right. a certain amount of things you can say in your lifetime, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's like how many paintings can you do over your like 50, 60, right, seventy? I, I have yeah. no idea. Right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, it, but it's like a certain amount, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if you live forever, then suddenly the things you might say they might be not as, uh, they might not have as much substance, mm -hmm. you know, they might not have as much meaning. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the dichotomy I think of, for me, realizing that nothing I do matters if there isn't something beyond this disillusionment, yeah. this, this death and this, you know, everything just, the world's going to cease to exist at some point and there will be nothing, nothing out there that cares that, that any of this ever happened. Right. That's just, that's not a good place to go. It's very nihilistic. It's but, a, it, the yeah. definition of nihilism, right? But when you go there and you face the reality of that, that we all have to face, it is a reality, yeah. but I can't explain how the knowledge came, but a very clear knowledge that yes, this is what it's your, your existence is supposed to look like. Yeah. And this is the ultimate end of it except right except except what right. except god makes it all okay yeah his plan for us is that even though all this stuff would become completely meaningless um he makes it eternal yeah and he makes us eternal and because we are eternal beings then what we do with ourselves in this life matters eternally yeah not because my paintings will persist Right. But because I become something through whatever I do that will carry on to my eternal existence. Right. And that is true meaning. Yeah. And it's not something I did for myself. It's not, nothing I can even comprehend right. of myself. But it's something that a knowledge that I was given that allows me to live my life in a way without um, that fear kind of, kind of that I threatening there. everything. Right. right. You know, it. I can have a, t a ton of meaning in sweeping the floor if I'm going at it in a way that I, I want to do an excellent job of it because that strife for excellence is, is really becomes meaningful to me. Yeah, right. And uh, there's no threatening death in the corner that, oh no, just because this is going to end, it makes it all worthless. Yeah, well, and it comes back to the mo like every day is a miracle. Every day is extremely precious. Right. And it's like the moment is the most valuable thing. Yeah. It's like there's not like... The past and the future don't exist in a sense. It's 
rent yeah. a second, the only thing. It's the only thing that you can really... Yeah, up, right? and in, a, in a nihilistic sense, you can look at that and go, well, this is all I've got, so I better, I better do as much as I can with it. Right. But in the other sense, it's like, this time is special, and it's given to me to define myself. Yeah. And so I'm going to do everything I can with it. Right. And one on one side is frantic and yeah. scary. The other side is peaceful and um, it builds you. Yeah. And so anyway, I don't want to get too... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a psychology professor or anything like that. A therapist, but, but I don't know. And I appreciate talking about this stuff. I think it's like a... It's a really complicated problem, you know, mm-hmm. finding meaning in everything that you do. And like, again, I think that the real winners of all this stuff are the people that enjoy it the most and that, you know, yeah. can be in the moment the most. And right. It's like, um, it doesn't like, I don't like, I don't really care anymore how good of a painter or drawer I am. I care mm-hmm. about how I feel while I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. It's like, am I thinking about doing a good painting to impress somebody to get a lot of likes to like, you know, right. To be able to show Proko and be like, Oh, I can, you know, make a ton of money off this now. Uh-huh. It's like, and I don't want to think about that stuff. You know, it doesn't, it's not, the reason to paint or draw right you know? yeah and i find the, the meaning you know and i do i do think about that a lot how how good of an artist am i how how what does my skill set look like right. what how far how much further can i take it but that has meaning to me because um i see how other artists okay. i see how other artists work has affected me and um, it's a spiritual experience to me to see a painting that's you know truly moving. Yeah. And if I don't have the skill set to create a work of art that moves people the way I've been moved, then I feel like there's still much more I can strive for. Right. And uh, that's that's my motive. Yeah. Obviously, if you don't have enough money to buy food, right. money should be your motive. Yeah. Get yeah. some get some money, buy <laughs> some food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for me, I want to take good care of my wife and my kids. I want them to have a, a life where they're not, like, constantly wondering when they can be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to be able to have fun with them. And those are all good things. Mm-hmm. But money is not the object. It's it's the means. Mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, I think in our free, uh, free society that we have, um, money is usually... Um, a result of being able to make other people happy. Yeah. So if you make a product that makes somebody's life more useful or more meaningful or more um, comfortable, right. then you have done some good in the world and they are willing to give you money to pay for that good. Yeah. And so that, that to me in and of itself is a bit of meaning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a, like I've seen a lot of people hating on Elon Musk recently. And mm-hmm. I understand it from the perspective of like, you know, you know, he is obviously very wealthy, but he also has created 250,000 jobs. Exactly. He's done something good for society. Yeah. You know, I, I think that nothing is binary. I think there is some amount of evil involved with everything, but at the same mm-hmm. time to throw out the accomplishments of one person, because, mm-hmm. you know, like you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. You know? it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like when you have a, I think, certain philosophies prevail in society at different points in time. And, and right now, you know, the, and I guess it's fairly constant, but, uh, the hammer that everybody has now is demonize people. You, you envy. Yeah. And, um, Elon Musk has so much money. Anybody can envy him if they're, if they're after the, the financial success or the accolades or whatever. And I don't know much about his business dealings or his personal life. Yeah. But I, I know that uh, when, when somebody buys a Tesla, right. they're buying the Tesla because they want the Tesla and it's at a price that's worth it for them to buy it. At. Yeah, yeah. And he's putting I don't know, thousands of little satellites up in the atmosphere where we're going to get 5G internet at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. You know, how is that not improving people's lives? And that's ev- incredible, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody pays for that because they, they agree that it's worth it. And there might be some, and there are tycoons that do things. There might be some underhanded business dealings he's involved with. I don't know. Yeah. If he is, you know, shame on him and he should be punished for it or whatever. But but just to, to dislike somebody because they're successful, it's just, to me, it's dumb. Yeah. It's yeah. just yeah. dumb. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, I mean, um, the fact that we have running water and electricity yeah. and, like, we can walk down the street and not worry about being 
robbed or, or right. well, I, you know, at least around here, you know, in yeah. the United States. And it, it's like a miracle, right? It is. It's, uh, and it's, it's something to be incredibly thankful for. It's like that, That's like not the default. I mean, that hasn't been the default for most of human. Yeah. I, we live, you and I yeah. it, it live better than the kings of the past. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that. I mean, what did they have that we don't? The only thing they had that we don't is the ability to boss people around. Right. And why is that? That's not important. No, it's, well, and, like, how much that, do you think a marshmallow would cost in the 1700s? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right, it's like $300, yeah. right? Well, I can drive, I mean, I live, we are, I live kind of out in the boonies, right? My yeah. town is like 800 people. Yeah. Um, but within a half an hour drive, I can have great Indian food, great Mexican food, right. uh, okay, d- decent Chinese food, you yeah. know? Good um, yeah. yeah, but in a, in a place like this, I can decide what nationality of food I want to eat at what time of day, right. you know, however much, and kings of the past couldn't do that. No, no. So we're, we have so much to be grateful for. Yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, well, and they also had to worry about polio. And, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> Yep. It's, it's pretty incredible. And, and they could, no matter how rich they were, they could hop on a jet and fly across the world. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, you couldn't drive around in a van. Right, exactly. The van just didn't exist. Yeah. Had to hop on their, in, in their little... Uh, in a horse and yeah. take six months to get across the country. Yeah. Or, yeah. So it's just perspective. I think, I think we need to realize that how blessed we are and how that's built, all that success, all these things we have are built upon... People like Elon Musk that are just like, hey, what if, yeah. what if I risk it all and do this? Right. And it ends up that everybody gets something new from yeah. that. Right. That's how we got cars. That's how we got um, the internet. That's how we got, um, you know, the medical advancements we have. It's like somebody had an incentive. Like if a doctor is like needs funding for something. I, I don't know how all this works, but there has to be money there to make these things happen. Yeah. And there has to be somebody who wants that money right. to work toward doing something or else they wouldn't risk their whole livelihoods for yeah, it. Yeah, right. And it's worth doing, right? Yeah. And it's like, again, going out to the idea that you know, it's pursuing meaning is like, I don't think Elon cares about money. You know, he cares about something deeper than, yeah. you know, he could have stopped working if, at like, 25 or something right with PayPal you know, mm-hmm. he didn't have to keep working but he chose to put it all into yeah. SpaceX and Tesla and it's like sure he's worth billions of dollars but the difference in the utility between having you know 50 million dollars and however many billions he has it's like what like yeah. <laughs> once you have a, a yacht and five mansions around the world it, yeah what else is going to change because of my just power yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But he doesn't appear to be exercising power. Right. So he just he's just after the next biggest thing. Like yeah. what, what can I do to, to become right. to become cool or to accomplish something right. meaningful? Yeah. We're thirty five minutes. Okay. Do you wanna wrap up? Yeah, um, I'm, we haven't made it about art at all, so I don't want to. Well, no, I, 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 I guess I guess um, the uh, we, we don't necessarily have to talk about art. So okay, we, we we can talk about art for five minutes if you want. Um, it's not my priority. It's not my baby. Okay. Um, just uh, what other? Yeah, let's wrap it up with something. Well, whatever you want to, whatever direction you want to go with, it's fine. Okay. So if you have good questions or Conversations like this with friends. Yeah, yeah. You, you have a good personality for this stuff, I think. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I speak my mind, whether it's comfortable or not, yeah. whether people like it or not. Mm-hmm. And so I guess it just depends on who oh, I'm yeah, talking yeah. to. Right. And um, I, my wife and I philosophize a lot together. Yeah, yeah. So these, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to just speaking my mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's very cool. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess to end this, I mean, it's like, a you're obviously someone who's dedicated your life to the craft of painting and, um, it, it's a very impressive, very like difficult road to walk. And, 
Um, do you have any like projects you're excited about that are coming up? Well, uh, that you can't talk about. Yeah. Um, I I have some confidential stuff, uh, but there are, well, these, these pieces are just a a part of a body of work I'm doing for, um, the out West art show. Right. And that's just a a place where I just go and display, um, a dozen paintings or so of, of, uh, images that mean something to me. Yeah. Uh, My family, um, were pioneers on one side. And uh, my grandpa was a legit died in the wool cowboy. Yeah. And he, it's funny, I'm named after him. His name was Alvin Veselka, but he went by Hank. Because <laughs> he, that's just a nickname he was given early on. And he was, he was a good old cowboy. And so I, I, I really enjoy the aesthetic um, of that, uh, that movement yeah. in our history. And so, and, and, I've, and I, I just love painting figures. I like painting horses and I like landscapes. And it's, it's a really good way to get a message or a story into, um, into my work right. with all three of those elements. Yeah. And so that's what, what this work is about. Um, but, uh, there, there's a, there, there are some future projects I have in mind that I don't want to speak too much about yet because I want the work to kind of speak for itself and it's still in the development phases where it's going to be a little more personal. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little less about my history or my family history and a little bit more about just me. Right. And, yeah. Hopefully that comes to be, you know, it's right. yet to be seen. Yeah. I found when I talk about things that I'm excited about projects, they are less likely to actually manifest themselves. Mm. You know, it's like, it's, it's like there's suddenly pressure for it to exist. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I get paralyzed. Yeah. Then if it doesn't happen in the way that you envision it, yeah. then you just give up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So I catch you. Yeah. That's kind of. Yeah. I get to protect your babies. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Well, so, uh, I, I guess I have no followers yet, but if you want to tell anyone where to follow you. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I'm at, uh, on Instagram, I'm at Albin underscore Veselka. My website is albinveselka.com. So I'm pretty easy to find if you can spell my name. So if you just post a link to it or. No, yeah. No, I'll put a thing in the, and the, I'll put a, a thing in the, the thing, the thing in the thing. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah, just, uh, I, I uh, appreciate any followership or any anybody reaching out to just drop me a line saying you saw this because uh, I like to I like to know what's getting out there what people are appreciating because um, you know another way of finding meaning is just how many people do you touch and yeah, yeah. and how do they feel about what you're doing so right. yeah so make yourself known cool yeah do it thanks thank you bye yeah. Uh, thanks for doing this. No problem. Thank you. Cool. Fun having a fire in my studio. Yeah.